Let's go ahead and finish off part B for this problem. And again, we want to try to attack this uh, using the same systematic approach. So some of the steps you might have to go back and redo. Let's talk about this. So this step is harder than the previous one. This maybe might be more similar to the types of problems that gave you trouble. Now, first thing to notice here is that now we're doing a multi-part problem. And this is very realistic for what you're going to see on the exams. On the exam, you're going to see maybe just on the whole midterm, there's maybe going to be just four problems. And each of them is going to be multi-parts, maybe four or five parts each. Um, so we have to be able to um, see how to go from one part to another part in a multi-part problem. So what do we need to do here? Well, the first thing I should have probably done was, before I even went on to part B, I should have built this into my overall framework. Now we know what this time is. So I'm going to go ahead and put this up here. 0.014 seconds. Times are always positive, so I won't bother putting in a sign on that. And maybe I should even build that into my sketch. So this was where we were at at time 0 seconds, and this is where we're at at time 0 0.014 seconds. So build the new information into our five variables and into your sketch. Now, when there's a new part of the problem, you have to ask which parts of my previous work still hold and which parts don't. Well, does our sketch still hold here? And the answer is not really. Now we're going to extend the wall of snow so that we can get to a point where the puck's going at zero meters per second. So the first thing we should have done should have been to extend our picture over here. Because we're not just going to this point anymore. The whole point here is that we're going to add more snow until it's thick enough for us to completely stop the puck. So go back and redo the sketch. So I've gone back to step one of the systematic method, and I'm redrawing what we need to draw about the object's path. Do I have to change any of these numbers? Well, these numbers are all really right. We're still entering at 32 meters per second. At this point, they, they still would be going at 0.18 meters per second. This is still 0.35 meters. So these numbers haven't changed. These are all still correct. But on another problem, they might change. So you have to be careful about that. Don't we need to change like, the label, like VF is now zero, not VT? Excellent. That's very good. So 
Um, that would be the other part of step one, label the initial and final positions. Label the initial and final positions. Well, this is still the initial position, but this is no longer the final position over here. Actually, if you wanted to, you could treat either of these as the initial position now, because we, we know the velocities at both of these places. But maybe it's simpler to treat this as the initial position. <coughs> when we say initial and final, the initial position is not like the beginning of the universe, and the final position isn't the end of all time. It's just the beginning and end of the interval that we're focusing on. Well, now th this is the interval that we're focusing on. So those are our initial and our final positions. That's a good point. Our velocity and acceleration vectors are still right. We still have our axes. Um, all right, now we're ready to go on to step four. Now, one thing that I don't know whether you guys did, it, it didn't look to me that you were necessarily rewriting these five variables. Well, do we need to rewrite these? Can we use the same five variables? Well, um, for example, do, do these numbers here still apply? Uh, for example, our, our, we know that our final velocity isn't going to be 18 meters per second anymore. It's going to be zero. And our time isn't going to be 0.14 seconds anymore. I think that was the big mistake that all of you made. I think you were all trying to use this time to answer the problem. But this applies to when we're at this point in the picture, not when we're at this point. And that's something that might be much clearer if we just extend the picture. So it's very important not to skip this step of redrawing the picture. So we have to rewrite our variables all over again. Our picture hasn't changed that much, but some of the, the numbers that it, who's at our, at our final position here and what our time is is going to change. Because what does time mean? Time means the time that elapses between the initial point and the final point. Well, since we have a new final point, we're going to have a new amount of time elapsed. OK, and now we have to go through and put in our question mark. Which of these is the question asking us for? X. Yeah, delta x. And something else that we should have been doing is then, ah, let's build that into the sketch. It's always good to build the question into the sketch as well. So this is what the question is asking us for, this distance. And that, again, makes it very clear that this time is no longer relevant, because this is not the time to go this distance. Do we have any numbers that we can plug in here? We need three numbers. VI, VF. So what should VI be? 32. Yeah, positive 32 meters per second. VF should be zero. Excellent. Zero, not 18 meters per second anymore. All right, and now the hard part, we, we need one more number, right? Are we supposed to find out acceleration from the previous one and then apply it to this one? Excellent. Very good. Does it make sense that these would both have the same acceleration? Yeah, or deacceleration. Yeah. yeah, why? Because who is causing the deacceleration? The snow. So it makes sense that as long as we're in the snow, we're going to have the same amount of, uh, of deacceleration. So we've seen that some of these numbers are different in these, two, in these two places, but some numbers are the same, and the acceleration is going to be the same. So that's the one number we can bring down. That's why it was uh, maybe a good idea not to erase this work. So we still have some more work to do up here. So how can we find this acceleration? Well, once you know four variables, you can use pretty much any kinematics equation that you want, whichever one seems most convenient. If, there's, if you only know three variables, there's only one equation that will work. But if you know four variables, you can use any of the equations the only equation you don't want to use is the one that's missing acceleration, but you can use any of the equations that have acceleration in them. So let's just pick uh, an equation there and work that out. I think you all picked the same equation. Maybe the easiest equation to use here is v final equals v initial 
plus 18. And then we can plug in for V final, we can plug in our positive 18. <coughs> meters per second. And our V initial is positive 32 meters per second. Time. Now the time is what we'd already figured out in part A, the 0.014 seconds. 